came with. So how are we all doing today? Hope we are excited and getting our work done. And the challenge for this week is not so hard. And you guys are having like a headway around it. So um, today we are going to be talking about ethical dilemma in the workplace. So like when you get um, to the workplace, especially like in tech and legs, you'll be seeing some, maybe you have um, some experiences like that has to do, you don't know how to go about it, um, how to proceed with it. So that's what we'll be talking about when the options you have all seem right. But before we start talking about um, the ethical dilemma in the workplace, let me just ask you this question. And you can unmute and speak, or you type it in the chat box. Either way is fine, or I would really prefer if you unmute and speak. So um, what would you do if a close friend of yours confesses to selling maybe the company's confidential data to a competitor? And the person came to you, like, um, out of maybe you guys are close, trust you, and the likes just confesses that to you. So what will you do? Will you remain silent to not betray your friend's trust? or you would report to the management, given that you're both working in the same place. So it, it affects your company in that. So it's not like the person is working in a different company. So the two of you are working in the same place, and then your friend confesses that he sold the, conf uh, the company's confidential data to a competitor. So what would you do? Would you remain silent, or you report to the management, or is there any other thing that you do about it? So let me hear your opinion. Yeah, it's a hard choice, and that's why it's like a dilemma. So you don't know how to proceed, but you have to like tread carefully. So what would you do? Well, you have to do something, or you rather remain silent. That's also a choice. So here, there's no right or wrong way, actually. It just depends on different factors, your personal values, what is most important to you. So what will you do in this case? Any person, anybody? Okay, so Jabber said, I would encourage my friend to go to the management and confess. Well, that's a good one. So if you speak to your friend and tell the person to go to the management and confess, what if your friend refuses? Will you just let it go? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Jeff is gone. Yeah, if he refuses, I have no choice but to, to myself to go to the management. Okay, so yeah, that's a good choice. So you first of all speak to your friend and then tell him to um, report himself. Where the person refuses, then you go ahead and to the reporting yourself. So is there anybody that will just maybe you also make okay to also make you liable for withholding information, definitely. But it's just between the two of you. So you may decide to remain silent and not betray your friends. But looking at it, I think the best approach is actually like speaking to your friend and letting them know that okay, they have to like report themselves to the management. Then if the person does not do that, you can go ahead and maybe report to the friend. But before you report to the friend, you would have already let them know that you are going to take that particular step. So that at the end of the day, it's not be that you betray their trust and, and you also not put your um your company in jeopardy. So now let's um, look at what ethics is. So basically, it's just simply okay, helping might be a good one, but he made a mistake and there are consequences. Sure, there are consequences. So, and afterwards, an adult knows what he's doing. So, he's aware of the consequences as well. So, yeah. So, um, ethics is simply just um, the sense of right and wrong, doing what is right, doing what is wrong, and knowing what is wrong, doing what is right. So, it's just um, a standard of right and wrong that, that is prescribed what in the, uh, humans ought to do, which a lot of these things, the ethics could be based on um, personal beliefs, could be based on your values and your um, culture. Different things form our um, ethics and the lights. But in the workplace, what does like, aside general ethics that we know that, OK, 
kids, shaped by your values and all of those things. Then when we get to the workplace, what's ethics in the workplace? What does this mean? So workplace ethics is just, um, there are moral principles that are guiding like honesty, fairness, accountability, respect, and all of those things that have to do like with the workplace. Most times when um, getting to a workplace, like getting employed even beforehand, or um, when you when you sign the uh, contract, you see some of their, um, maybe some of their um, compliance, some of their instructions that you have to follow, some of their, from there you can gauge their values and the ethics of the workplace. So, but now let's now look at some um, ethical dilemma. So as we've said before, it's just a situation where there are no obvious rights or wrong decision. But rather, the everything just seem right or seem wrong because if you take one particular choice, you choose one over the other, there are consequences. And if you choose the second option, so there are also consequences. So that is like the ethical dilemma. But then, what will guide our decision making here is just to know what uh, which of the consequences we can handle. So moving on, we in the tech workspace we have some um, common ethical dilemmas. For example, and one that is very common here has to do with data and um, all those proprietary information. So the first one here, we have data privacy and security. And this one is handling like user data, knowing that you are responsible for user data. Um, sorry. So here we should, especially when you are working in um, AI, machine learning and like that, you have to like deal with data and you have to make sure that like, you ensure personal information is protected against bridges and misuse. And for example, if you develop an app that you'll be gathering the um, data of the users, you should let them know, um, seek their consent, let them know about those things. Well, and most companies and most uh, people on some websites, we see it there, like in their privacy, but most people don't read it anyways. We have to like provide it and as much as possible, let the user know um, maybe if you'll be using their data and sometimes you can, they will have options of if they are okay with it, they can allow you to do that. And if they are not okay with it, they have other options as well. So the second one here is as in AI and machine learning. And this one is to ensuring fairness and avoiding discrimination. So, so what if, what if it was a company, if it was in the other, Okay, what do you mean by the company? Because when you are talking about the company, do you mean like if it was the manager or like someone in the higher up that is the okay? So now, if it's someone in the higher up that did that, you have to like weigh your options. One thing you have to consider, you can look at your um, fine, it is against your personal beliefs, and that's why it is an issue for you. But then again, you have to like consider your career. What impact would they have on your career? Now, if like if I'm to advise on this, and especially given like you are just starting out, like when you finish your training at STEM Academy, and you are just starting out as maybe um junior um, data engineer and the likes. Actually, I would say in when it is like a higher up and engaged, maybe perhaps the person has if you say you should report the person, you can decide to speak with the person if the person is a reasonable one. But then again. The person knows what the person is doing. So your manager, for example, knows exactly what he is doing. So if it's something you can talk to the person or you can uh, speak to another, um, maybe the CEO or any other person, fine. But you should also be aware of the consequences that it may have on your career. How um, your manager is in a senior position, if you decide to report him, he may have another trick up his sleeve and have maybe negative impact on your career. And then what if you decide not to do anything about it? What would he, it really mean to you? So it's just, there's no right or wrong answer there. So you just have to gauge, is it your personal belief that is most important to you at that moment? Or is it your career that is most important to you? So, and whichever decision you make, as you said, is a dilemma. Both, um, this, the, both decisions are right, so you can report. And then maybe at the end of the day, you have to look for another company or if everything goes well, maybe the manager will get fired or any other thing that happened. But the decision is yours and you should be able to like live up with the consequences that follows. And we all know like you can choose your decisions, you can choose your actions, but most times the consequences are out of our control. So but you have to just be aware of it and make your choice and be at peace with it.
So, um, Abu Bakr, I hope like that gives you an answer. Okay. All right. So now let's. Um, the second common ethical dilemma in tech that we're talking about is with the bias in AI and machine learning. So, um, as of last year, is it with Meta, like Facebook advertising, they were sued for um because of discriminatory ad especially like for like they advertise some housing their housing advertising system like it discriminates based on race color religion and the likes so they were sued for that and looking at it that's one example of some other like common um biases in ai say for example you are the one that have found this out so what are you going to do about it so that's where the um the dilemma comes in when you are aware of it. So what's the next step you're going to do? So now the, second, the third one here is intellectual property. And just like the example we gave, okay, and here is respecting ownership and avoiding plagiarism. So maybe you, um, maybe you're working on the code and then you copy the other person's code or plagiarize, you know, the tech is creative. So like you, maybe you made some changes, Fine, you may think it is like is fine, is okay, but there are some codes that you have to maybe sign consent or even some data that before you use, you have to like get the consent of the person that produces the data or the company that has access to those things. All right, um, so the fourth one is transparency. So being honest about capabilities and limitations of technology. So that is another issue with um, that common in tech. And say for example, say for example, you build an app and then you say it does what you know it cannot do or something like that. And you know those things, but when you find out what are you going to do about those things? So these are just some of the examples of ethical dilemmas that are common in the workplace. We have the data privacy and security, bias in AI, intellectual property, and transparency. So now, aside the work, the, um, the tech, aside from like the tech um, point of view, just the general workspace, what are some of the unethical practices that are common in the workplace? So the first one, we have discrimination. And discrimination can be maybe even during the hiring process, maybe during the hiring process when some people, they prefer uh, maybe just male gender working with them, some prefer just female. And you know all of those other discrimination that goes on around the hiring process. And it could be you are already working in this space. Maybe you've joined the group, you are working on the project, everything is going fine. And maybe your um your group leader or even the team member is just maybe just um, discriminatory against you and any of those things. So those are some examples of unethical practices that you may encounter in the workplace. Now we have the second one is unfair termination. This one is so common to the extent that it's now looking like something that is normal. So it's so common now that it's seeming so normal Say for example, especially like for, if I use uh, my country as an example, it's very common in the banking industry where sometimes you just get to work, you want to log in and just like get your day started. That's when you find out that you've been sacked. Naturally, like those things are not supposed to happen because beforehand, ideally you should have maybe a month's notice at least a month those things. But those things don't go on like that. And if we have someone that is really serious about it, they can take up an um, legal issue with them. So that is the second one. But this unfair termination is so common and it's so rampant that it's just mean as if it's something that is normal, but it is not. So another thing is lying to supervisors. So as an employee, and then maybe your supervisor, they need to work on a tax then uh, you have to like present it the following day. Perhaps we're not able to get um, the work done, but then you just decide to fabricate some things just to, um, so it's not look as if you've not done anything at all, which you've not done. So you just lie to your supervisor or that could be it, or perhaps you take, um, lie about a sick day and just, just lie to your supervisors. Those are unethical practices and they are very common in the workplace too. So another one is taking credit of others 
for a job done. You take all this for another person's um, work. Then recording more expenses than we use just for more cash. And this one is, um, that's another unethical practice and it's really common in the workplace. So all of these things you advise not to indulge in them. And if perhaps you find maybe your colleagues that are doing such a thing, then we've already talked about different approaches that you can go about it. Maybe speak to them, talk to your um, supervisor or any of those things. So now moving forward, we'll look at some ethical, um, some steps to take ethical, to make um, ethical decision making. So the first one here we have, what are the facts of the situation? Say for example, in the um, question that we asked when we wanted to start this um, the session. So what are the facts of the situation? The fact is your friend um, maybe sold the company's confidential data. So like perhaps he told you the reason why he did that, maybe to get money to um, finance his daughter's um, medical bills or whatever reasons they may be. But you get the fact about the situation, be sure like that. So in this case, it's your friend like confessed to you, so you are very sure that it happened. But in some cases, it may be like maybe you suspect it. It's not like open to you. You suspect it. But before you go on to the next stage, you should be able to like say, OK, for sure, this is what is really happening. And not just um go on based on your hunch. You should have like gotten enough fact about the situation. Then does the situation involve legal issues? Is this something that will involve legal issues? So you should be able to gauge that as well. So now you now look at um, what are your options and what are the consequences? Maybe you have option A, or B, C, different options. You gauge them and what are the consequences of each of those options? So from um, once you've done that, you evaluate your options about the situation based on maybe your personal values, the consequences attached to it, each of those things, what is most important to you. So you get your options about the situation, then you choose the best option for you in that position. So you choose what you know like is most important to you and you stick with that. And once you've done that, you implement your decision and then you reflect on it maybe um, moving forward, how are you going to handle it better or just reflect on what you've done. So those are some of the steps that I advise to for you to like take before making um, a decision, especially when it comes to when you are faced with ethical dilemma. So you should know the fact about the situation, if you need to collect more data, if you need to like present, have more proofs before you move on to maybe your stakeholders or any of those other uh, upper persons that you want to speak with. So have your facts and know if it involves maybe legal issues or it's just something like that the board will have to address. So, and what are the options and what are the consequences? And I think this, after the like getting your facts and knowing the legal issues involved or the people that will have to handle this, maybe your stakeholders. So you should know like your options. So what are your options to you, to your company, to your career, to your personal beliefs? What are your options and what are the consequences of those options? Then before you make your um, decision and you reflect on it. So now, We've talked about what ethics is about, what ethical dilemma is. And then we've moved on to some ethical dilemma in the workplace and some et on ethical practices that are common in the workplace. And we've also talked about steps that you can take to make a clear decision when you are faced with an um, ethical dilemma. Now let's look at how companies or organizations, how they create an ethical framework, how it is being created and how it works. So the first thing is they define their core values early on. And this is usually maybe from the CEO, the founder, like the core values, because they say that the um, way a company operates is just based on how the um, leaders are. defined early on when the company is refounded. And then they integrate ethics even in the hiring process. And this actually when you have been um, maybe going for interviews and the likes, that's why you find out that most other maybe culture fit questions, most um, behavioral questions are like the last steps during the hiring process. Once they've certified like, okay, you have the technical competence for you to take on the job. Then the next thing they will have to analyze is do you have the values, your values, does it align with the company's um, values? And what are some of your beliefs and some other questions just for them to gauge 
your ethics if it aligns with the companies. Then build, they also build a Hello, can you hear me? I... Okay, okay. So my internet went out for a minute. All right, thank you. So um, the third one is if you want to have like a good working um, environment or is or if you want for it to like gauge if the company is a good one. And this one, okay. So is they have a culture of respectful distance where people have the like, their employees, they can open up when they don't agree with maybe their team leader or maybe the managers. Every they, they feel safe expressing themselves, even when um when they have a differing opinion from what the person has said. And with that, to build the culture, when someone is an, in an et, on it um, ethical dilemma or find out that a colleague has done something wrong, it will give them a sense of right or wrong. It will give them how to like proceed. They know like okay the um. The working environment is a positive one. So they build a culture of respectful dissent. And then, and just to digress a little bit, you know, like after the training, most people, most, you know, get um, a remote job. But how about in some cases when it is on site and in some companies, even before the hiring process, they'll have maybe during the interview process, you go to the um, company like face to face. And sometimes the interview process can be, take up to like a week or thereabouts. So how are you going to gauge those things? You look at how the staffs interact with one another, how they communicate, all of those things can give you a sense of how the company operates and the type of um, ethics that is going on there and if it's a positive environment for you. So another thing that, especially with the leaders in place, is they, they lead by example. And they, they establish an independent board. And this board, what they are responsible, they are just like the disciplinary panel. So they are responsible for dealing with all these ethical issues, and they're the ones that like handle the staff, handle the ethical issues. So they have the board that handles that. Even before, um, maybe if it involves legal issues, it's through that board that like handle all of those things. So that's how companies and organizations create an ethical framework. So that is that about it. Now I'll need you to um, interact with this. I'll need your opinion on it. It's another scenario question. Say you are a machine learning engineer at the tech company and your, your team is developing a diagnostic tool to, this, to detect early onset of cancer, say breast cancer. Then doing testing, you discover that the two occasionally misdiagnosis and misdiagnosis giving false positives. So your manager insists on proceeding with the launch to meet a deadline. So now the question is, what are the ethical issues that are present and how should they handle this? So let me just give you more details before you go on. So you are the machine learning engineer in the team, and you worked on this too, but you found like it's, it, the tool is working perfectly, it's good. But in some cases, it gives like, it misdiagnosis, giving false positives. And what I mean by false positives is in the cases where the person does not have like breast cancer or it's a, the person does not even have the um like who does not have the breast cancer is not yet coming out nothing at all the person is safe and sound in good health but then your um device detects that the person has the breast cancer so now it's because the device is for detecting early onset so it's like when the breast cancer they are still very small like still little cells so like they cannot do much harm and with that the the treatment process is just um uh, is not like um like the chemotherapy is not that extensive. So it's still, but the person we still have to spend. So judging from it, it's not like um, the person's health is in much jeopardy aside from the expenses and maybe some drugs that they will have to take. But all, all other things in place, person is will be okay since they don't even have the cancer in the first place. So it's not like they are good to go. But you know, like the two is still like detecting those cancers when they are not present. So what are you going to do in this case? So the first thing is, what's the ethical issues there? So definitely there are ethical issues there. But what are you going to do? 
Can I go into like um, keep quiet and let you guys launch the tool and get um, started? You start like people should be using it, and most people should be using it, or you will tell your manager to hold on. Or since your manager insists on proceeding with the launch, are you going to like request to maybe be higher up person? So what are you going to do in this case? Anyone wants to go? Nobody wants to speak. You can just type in the chat box. So I should assume that everyone here we just like let it go and everybody just say let us launch the the tool like that since it's not like well, what would you do? Are you guys still here with me or I'm speaking with myself? Okay, so we are still here. <laughs> oh, you don't understand the question. Okay, misdiagnosis of patients lying to public with ethical issues. Yeah, definitely, those are the ethical issues there. So now, what's, how would you handle that? Okay, you try to convince the manager with the long-term implications of, of this decision. Yeah, so you could do that. So, um, and if you like from the question you've already like spoken with your manager but you insist on you proceeding with the launch to meet a deadline so yeah you can maybe speak with someone in higher up but then in this scenario now first thing first we know like the diagnosis so if you launch it is this something some questions that you could ask make more research and come up with that okay also lying to investors is on is an it's on look is an ethical issue yeah yeah and make more research and come up with that um i don't understand this what you mean by make more research and come up with that uh okay i mean uh, like uh, having the research in place so that you can base your arguments on the actual data or the actual implications of going forward with this decision Okay, okay, like getting more fact about it just to yes. back up. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, makes sense. So you could do that. The too. Other, okay, okay, go on. Um, the, the other uh, handling the situation could be like, uh, like being frank about the capabilities of or coming clean about the capabilities of the, yeah. Uh, diagnosis too so maybe that would help make it better sometimes in the future yeah exactly. it doesn't mean it is the last product so yes so yeah thank you Rebecca. so since it's a um, diagnostic tool and like like you're just launching so even when you're like presenting it to your investors or about to launch the products you let them know that okay this has sometimes give um false positives since you are, your manager is like insisting on meeting the deadline so you can talk to your manager like getting the facts letting him know like okay this um device has some errors give some er um, errors sometimes 
Then after that, if the manager still insists on um, launching it, if you can speak with someone in the higher up, you could do that. But if not, you can still let your manager know that, okay, even if we are going to launch, we can let the um, people that will use it, maybe the hospitals, maybe your investors, know like, okay, it is working fine, but have some, um, give some false, false positives sometimes. And then you can assure them like you still continue to work on the tool and the likes. So that's the way to go about it. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, so now let's look at um, the challenge documents, what we have there. Okay, so for this week, okay. So for this week, just like we know, the deadline is on Saturday, 29th p.m. So here, you are the head of the AI group at a renowned company in the U.S. So leading a grand working project to develop an innovative solution for clean water access. So you were recruited from your previous school in your home country, where your family still resides. You joined this project due to your expertise in AI and machine learning. The project's mission to create a sustainable and affordable solution for clean water access aligns with your personal values and motivation to make a positive impact on the world, particularly in Africa. So you were assigned that, that you were assured that the product would be priced affordably and made accessible to those who need it the most, which are the Africans. So, however, as the project nears completion, you discover that the company plans to surprise the product at the premium, making it unaffordable for the very people it's intended to help. So this revelation leaves you feeling betrayed and conflicted as it goes against the principles that motivated you to join the project in the first place. Keep in mind, you left your own country with your family, everything to go and join this foreign company in the US just because of um, your believing like, um, making an impact in the world, only for it to discover like it may not even be possible at the end of the day. So now you are faced with a difficult decision to make. So what would you do? Will you stay quiet and continue working? After all, you are getting paid and your career is just right on track. Or would you talk to your bosses to confront them about this unethical decision? Or would you report the process to authorities or the media? The practice, I mean, to authorities or the media? So the question here is, you should consider the implications of each option on your career, personal belief, the company, and the consumers. And when I mean the consumers here, I mean those in Africa that need the um, access to clean water. So what's the impact, what's the implication of each of those options? So the second thing is, among the three options, choose the one you believe is most ethical and justify your answer. So now, that you've chosen an option. The option you chose in question two will definitely have some consequences. So state two consequences of your chosen option and explain how you plan to resolve, or if you cannot resolve it completely, how you plan to diffuse each of the consequences. So the first question is, if you had the opportunity to choose something else aside those three options, provide two alternatives, alternative ideas for what you will do in such situation and why. So once you've done that, you should create a PowerPoint presentation with maximum of 10 slides that detail your answers to the tasks that are written above. So that's what we have for this week. Should I go by it again or it is okay like that? You understand? Okay, so Abu say you understand. Should I assume everyone does too? Okay, okay. All right, good. So that is all we have for this week. So um, have a restful weekend. Can I say weekend? We are still in the second day. So enjoy the rest of your week and have a productive. Okay, I'll work again. So the, for the career challenge, this is the only one for this week? Okay, no, this is the only one. No, I mean only one challenge, exercise one. Yeah, this is the only, it's only one challenge. Okay. It's yeah. just this background, then you answer the questions that follows, so that is all. 
grouping. All right, great. So I'll be expecting your submissions and have a productive day. All right, let me stop recording. You can leave now. Yeah, the submission is on um, Saturday, 8 p.m.